Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential trigonometric equation, whatever you want to call it. We have sine of y to the power x plus cosine of y to the power x equals 1. And we're going to be solving for a, a, x and or y values, depending on the situation. So I find this equation pretty interesting. And the I think the source is from Russia, I, even though I don't exactly remember it's probably an Olympiad problem somewhere. There's quite a few problems, you know, from Romania, Russia, and obviously other countries that are just simply beautiful. So how do you approach a problem like this? So you're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Why don't we use a well-known identity, right? What is that called? The Pythagorean identity. Of course, the trigonometric version of the Pythagorean identity. What is that supposed to mean? But Well, this is what I'm talking about. If you have a right triangle, let's say this is angle theta, this is A, this is B, and this is C. As you know, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Thanks to Pythagoras, we have this beautiful theorem, right? That's probably one of the most important ones. And a lot of proofs are based on this, and there's obviously quite a few proofs of the Pythagorean theorem itself which is really good and pretty interesting topic. But that's not what we're going to talk about. We want to focus on trigonometry here. So why don't we just go ahead and do this. Divide both sides by c squared. Obviously, c cannot be 0, well, at least for real numbers. From here, we get a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared is equal to 1. Now, notice that a squared over c squared is the same as a over c quantity squared, and the second expression is b over c quantity squared equals 1. And if you look at this triangle carefully, you're going to realize that a over c is the same as sine of theta. So this gives us sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared equals 1, which is, again, the Pythagorean version of the, or um, what's it called, the Pythagorean theorem for the trigonometry or trigonometric version of the Pythagorean theorem, whatever you want to call it. But the sine squared plus cosine squared, because we don't want to write this with parentheses, there's actually a simpler way to write it, which is like this, and sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. This is even true when theta is not real. Isn't that amazing? It can be complex, it can be imaginary, but this still holds. Now, how do we use that information? Well, if you look at your equation carefully, you're going to realize, let me copy that equation right here, we have sine y to the power x plus cosine y to the power x equals 1. Great. Now, this means if x is equal to 2 from the Pythagorean formula or theorem, whatever, you get an identity because sine squared y plus cosine squared y becomes 1. So, if x is equal to 2, then y can be pretty much anything, including complex values. Which means, for x equals 2, y can be anything. Okay? But what about other values? Can x be 1? That's a good question, right? Can x be 3? That's another good question. And you can explore all that. But obviously, we're not going to replace x with infinitely many values. And not even integer. How about x equals square root of 2? That would be another interesting question. But we're not going to go through those. Instead, we're going to have a more general approach. So definitely two works because of the Pythagorean theorem. But what happens if x is equal to 1, for example? Obviously, for x equals 1, let's just look at a couple numerical values, not a whole bunch. But if x is 1, then we kind of get sine y plus cosine y equals 1, which is not always true, but in some cases true. And how do we approach this? This equation can be solved in so many different ways, but I'm just going to show you something real quick. I'm going to square both sides because that's probably the easiest way to get to the answer, but you got to be careful about one thing, because if sine y plus cosine y was negative 1, and when you square both sides, you will still get the same equation, obviously, which doesn't have the same solutions, because we introduce extraneous solutions. But this is one again which is good, they, de they do cancel out, leaving us with sine y cosine y equals 0, or if you want to write it as the double angle formula, sine 2y equals 0. Now, here's what we need to do. We're going to solve for y values, and obviously, in this case, you can uh, replace this with pi over 2, 
or sine of pi over 2 because sine of pi over 2 is, wait a minute, that's not true. I meant sine of 0, right? Uh, but instead of sine of 0, you can pretty much uh, call it 2 pi n. But let me tell you something. If you uh, think about the unit circle, obviously sine is 0 here and here. So instead of multiples of 2 pi, actually, those are multiples of pi, aren't they? So we can basically uh, replace this with n pi or pi n. Uh, I think pi n is probably more common. And then from here, we can safely say that, uh-oh, 2y can be pi n. But of course, you're always allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, so I can just add 2 pi k. I almost added 2 pi ki because I got stuck with complex numbers. Something got stuck, right? What about complex numbers? Well, I do have another channel that's called A plus BI, where I focus on complex numbers. So go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. Great. Now, from here, we can basically get a solution like this. Y equals pi over 2 times n plus pi k. n and k are integers, by the way, even though I forgot to say that. Hopefully you knew. Now, here, for example, if k is equal to 0, then we get y equals pi over 2n. And for particular values of uh, n, for example, if n is 0, y is 0. If n is 1, then we get pi over 2. And then we get 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And then we get 3 pi over 2, right? And then we get 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, which is 0. So we kind of you can kind of stop here, but this is only for k equals 0. Of course, if k is 1, then you get other solutions probably. Go ahead and check them out. But here's the thing. We need to check for extraneous solutions. Remember, we had sine y plus cosine y is equal to 1. So our equation or values actually need to satisfy this, right? So we've got to make sure that this is satisfied. For example, if y is equal to 0, obviously sine 0 is 0, cosine, so this works. What about pi over 2? At pi over 2, sine is 1, cosine is 0, that again works. But at pi, it's not going to work because one of the values is negative 1, the other one is 0, so we have to exclude that or reject it. And 3 pi over 2, we have the same problem. So it looks like we have two solutions when x equals 1, it's y equals 0, or y equals pi over 2. Of course, you can write more general solutions, but uh, I think this will suffice. And for x equals 2, we already talked about it. But here's a million dollar question. Are there other solutions? What happens if x is 3, so on and so forth? So let's go ahead and look at this from another perspective. Let's rewrite our equation. One of the things that you can do is, even though it's not probably going to help you, is you can write uh, sine or cosine y in terms of the other one, and then ch just try to go from there. But here's the problem. Uh, we're not going to be able to solve it because it's exponential. So instead, let's do this. Let's look at special cases. For example, can, to get 1 from sines and cosines, maybe this can be 1 and this can be 0, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? The problem is, um, well, can it not be bigger? Like, for example, maybe this is going to be 2 and this is going to be negative 1. Here's the problem. Sine y cannot exceed 1, right? So is it possible that it can exceed 2 when you raise it to the power of x? That's a good question. And this is what can happen. If sine y is equal to 1 half and x is equal to negative 1, then yes, that is exactly going to happen. But when sine is 1 half, cosine y is not going to be, uh, actually it's going to be root 3 over 2 with the plus minus sign, and x is negative 1. So when you raise it to the power of negative 1 and add it to this, it's not going to work. You see? So they kind of have to work together. But here's what I'm going to do, though. 1 and 0 should work because these are special cases. Sine y to the power x is 1. We can kind of tell, okay? So if this is 1, then from here we get different cases. For example, sine y can be 1 and then x can be anything. We don't care. Sine y can be negative 1 and x can be even. That's also another case. And x can be 0 and sine y should not be 0. Well, that's not true because sine y can be 0 and x can be 0 at the same time. You know why? Because 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. You don't believe that? Go ahead and check out the video that I made. I also included that in the description. And you can, we can debate in the comment section down below. Okay? So, but uh, those are some cases. And from the first one, for example, if sine y is equal to 1, then we basically get 
pi over 2 plus multiples of 2 pi. And then for this one, sine y needs to be negative 1. That just means that y needs to be uh, 3 pi over 2. And then x is even. Any even integer should work. If sine y is equal to 0 and x is 0, that just means that y is a multiple of pi and x is just 0. Again, that should work, but, you know, let me know what you think. What about the reverse? If you switch roles and you're going to get something similar. But as you can see, there are so many solutions. But what happens is x is equal to 3 or if it's negative. Those are some interesting cases that, you know what? You can go ahead and graph this in Desmos and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a beautiful, beautiful graph. I haven't tried it, but I'm going to do it after I record this video. Sorry, I forgot to include a screenshot here. If someone can do it and give us a link or something, I'll try to maybe uh, share uh, it with the audience. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and bye-bye.